Hello Taurus and welcome to your February forecast. I hope that this month is getting off to a fantastic start for you and I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of information comes through for you. As I was starting to channel, which uh, happens when I choose the cards and meditate on your sign, the message that I received for you was to really pay attention to the, uh, the way that you're thinking this month. You can either use your thoughts to propel you and move you closer to your goal or they can be things that kind of sideline you or pull you back or weigh you down. And so you really want to try to think in the affirmative, uh, think in statements about moving forward, like I, I am doing this, I can't wait to share this, uh, I've worked hard to make this happen, uh, I deserve for this to happen. The antithesis of that or the opposite of that would be, uh, you know, like I'm not good enough, I'm not ready for this, no one's going to be interested in it. We all have these thoughts of doubt, but I want you to quickly kind of push them away and think, let me keep trying. Let the universe show me if these thoughts are valid. Let me stop applying uh, a sort of feeling before I've seen the feedback. So it's sort of like if you see a performer uh, on stage, you know, they kind of they wait to see what the audience does. I want you to put out what you need uh, to sort of like create your your dream, your goal, and then just let the universe provide the feedback. It will give you subtle nudges in either direction as a course correction. Sometimes you get a little delay and you get a chance during the delay to try something new or you get a chance to really ground yourself and say, no, I'm really ready. And, that, and then you push forward even harder. So. And instead of you being the judge, allow the universe and the energy around you to guide you. Uh, and ultimately, that's going to create success for you, not just this month, but over the course of 2018. So think in the affirmative. Think as positively as possible. That's not to say that critical thought doesn't enter into the equation. It's just saying that you're not going to attach solely to the criticism or to the negative emotions. You're going to allow those to help you ground yourself, course correct, and then again, get back on your track. All right, let's go ahead now and shuffle the cards. Before I do that, um, just let me detail how this works for those of you that are brand new. Uh, I start off with a Celtic cross, which I'm gonna pull in a moment, and then I will look at a Catalyst card, which ties everything together. And then I expand that to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. All right, I'm gonna go, go ahead and shuffle the cards, lay them out, and I'm usually quiet during this part because I just want to observe uh, what's coming through in the cards and also I get additional information. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look now at the catalyst. All right, so this card is a subtle nudge saying this is the month to really either make peace with the fact that you want something to happen and also really commit to something or move on to another goal. But it's time, it's like now or never basically is what this card is saying. And whatever you work on now, this card is closely associated with autumn. So depending on what part of the, uh, the globe you're in, this will kind of differ in the message. But I'm kind of looking at this for autumn in North America, which will be closer to like September, October, November. Um, so that part of the year, whatever you start working on now, you're kind of in a eight to 10 month trajectory to bring something into fruition. We talked earlier about how thoughts uh, can create a manifestation and how sometimes we're not sure like if it's if it's a short-term or long-term goal, this looks like something that you could work on within this calendar year. So I want you to attach to whatever that outcome is, whether it's getting fit, whether it's getting a new job, whether it's starting a new business, whether it's finding the love of your life, whatever it is, start working on it now so that you can basically harvest it and, and bring that in come uh, the end of this year. So that's your channeled message. Now let's look at the cards and see how they feed into this immediacy or this needing to deal with things now and in the moment. I'll turn the camera down now so that you can see all of the cards. And uh, let me pull it back a little bit. And don't worry, I'm gonna pull up each card so that you can see it as we work through this. So right at the center, we have probably one of my favorite, if that's possible, 10 of swords cards, because this card is showing the ability to move beyond uh, a disappointment, a failure, or a setback. And really what happens when we get a 10 of swords moment in our life, which sometimes can be 
let's let's face it, a, a Ten of Swords can be sort of like a flair for dramatic or a card where things may go a little bit further than they need to, and it's almost like you needed that uh, dramatic end to help you realize now it's time. So whatever it was in your life that is now coming to a punctuated end, this card is saying rise above it, find a way to look back at yourself and think how and why did I call this into my life? Sometimes the Ten of Swords moment can be an argument, sometimes it can be a blow up at work, uh, it can be someone in your life doing something that sort of in a way that can't be repaired or forgiven sometimes even, at least for a while, th there's a moment that comes through where you now know, wow, I, I, I either misunderstood this or I let it go too long. So this is the equivalent of having the kettle starting to uh, sing when it's getting hot. You know now it's time to move on, okay? So same thing here. We've got the death card right over top of it. And um, what I like with this death card is it is a very active one. Uh, and so I don't see you sitting in this moment for too long. It's okay to feel the anger, the frustration, or for some of you, the relief that might be coming through with the Ten of Swords, and then quickly move through it. Now, because both of these also can be related to health, if those uh, messages don't relate to you, I would say this is a really important month for you to make positive changes in your health. The Ten of Swords card can come when you are, just as you see here, maybe not moving enough. And it typically has to do with um, the back spinal areas, but it can also just indicate um, chronic pain. So it could be anywhere in your body, but it's usually acute. It's, it's very, you know, very distinct, very painful, and it might be something that you've been dealing with for a while. It can also be something annoying and persistent like psoriasis or, um, or any sort of other issue that might come up unexpectedly and then kind of go away. So if you're having chronic issues, uh, this, there's two ways to read this. One is that through proper treatment or through trying something new, you might be able to bring it to an end or that you know, you, you might come to a place where you really need the assistance of a healthcare professional. So if there's something going on in your body, that should always be the case, by the way. You shouldn't need my cards here to help you with that. But this month in particular, you're either gonna have a great opportunity to avert further frustration or there might be something else going on that reveals itself. So big change uh, coming through for everybody this month, it's just a question of is it emotional, is it physical, or is it in a situation around your life? Just remember, whatever it is, this Ten of Swords is actually one of hope, which is there's a way to rise above it or there's a way to move past this frustration or this moment of change. And the Death card is always about embracing the change, embracing whatever you can to bring about um, new growth. Remember, thoughts, especially if it's regarding health, are very important because they create uh, chemical reactions within the body. So just as important as, I would say they're just as important as antibiotics, eating well, sleeping well, your thoughts actually can heal or hurt your body. Uh, as we look at what's been affecting you prior to this month, we have the King of Pentacles, which is showing me that many of you have actually been working very hard, working hard at putting money away or paying off bills or just trying to get uh, you know, a better sort of foundation for yourself. This could be about going to school or, again, just trying to do self-improvement. So I feel like you've done some hard work last year, which is starting to pay off. And for some of you, this could actually mean uh, new love, new friendships, new partnerships coming through. We have the Six of Cups cards, which is one of my favorite relationships cards. This one is about a deeper friendship, and it's also about a feeling of uh, sort of fun or, or feeling irreverent. The uh, the reversal of this card is really speaking, though, to needing to get back to that. So if there's someone in your life, it could be a new love, it could be someone you've been with for years, try to spend time with them uh, more now than you have in the past. And if you feel this kinship with someone in your life, especially if it's new, uh, this card is, ex is, is telling you to explore that, to embrace it. These things are rare. It doesn't come along all the time. So enjoy it. This can be a card of best friends, too. So if it's been a while since you picked up the phone and talked to your best friend, who could be like your sister, your mother, or again, someone that you met in school, whatever, this is a chance to reconnect. They may need you. The reversal is usually you giving more than you're getting. So um, be there for your friend if you can. As we look at your crowning card, it's interesting. For some of you that are looking for love, this is a promising sort of combination because whenever I see two of the same suit, we have the King of Pentacles and then the Knight of Pentacles on top. This is speaking to me of uh, possibly finding someone, but it's necessary because they are uh, sort of connected here with the Ten of Swords and Death. 
there could be a big change that both of you have to go through before this could happen. So some of you may be meeting each other when you're in a big life change, like you may, might have just lost someone that you love because we've got the death card. There may be a, a divorce or a separation that's happening, or there may be some sort of a, a, a big emotional moment, and then all of a sudden, this new person came in, you're not looking for it, and these cards are speaking to the fact that you need to kind of work through your own um, karma and drama first, and then try to just be friends, start it off on a friendship, and it could lead to something more. Um, this is a month where you probably are going to have to put more energy in at work, and that's the challenge, because initially I said, try to balance that, try to spend time with the ones you love. There's a step up moment happening at work. Whenever I see the Three of Pentacles card, um, this is usually one where if you're working hard, it's going to pay off. If it's reversed, it's people challenging you, but they, it's also saying that you're very much able to meet their challenge. So really not a lot of negative connotations with the Three of Pentacles. Just seize any opportunities you have to uh, make a splash, make a difference, because it looks like it's very promising for you. One of your challenges when I'm looking at your ego and looking at your sort of mind this month is, can you focus? What is it that you want to work on? The Seven of Cups is a great card when you want to brainstorm, when you want to think outside of the box and come up with unusual solutions. It can be a bit of a hindrance, though, if if it's necessary for you to make a decision quickly, as we see with this now card reversed. So if there's something where your, um, your boss, your children, your loved one is, is trying to have you come to a decision, uh, as I look at your environment card, you're gonna have to either talk it through or just take action. Sometimes you can overthink things and this card uh, is definitely a warning on that. The reversal showing me that you're absolutely ready to uh, and able to make a quick decision, you have to trust yourself. So the same way uh, I use the cards and I use my own intuition to, to help guide me as a compass, you have that within yourself. Listen to your inner voice, however it communicates, and don't second guess it, move forward. Uh, I see some really great growth for you overall with money. All the money cards uh, are either in a good position or the reversals are not that bad because they're positive cards to start with, and that's the case here with the Nine of Pentacles. This is in hopes, fears, and desired action. I usually don't pay attention to the words beneath the cards, but this one's a great uh, definition for the Nine of Pentacles, which is growth and expansion. And so also attaching to the month of uh, September 9. So as I was looking at earlier, I feel like for you, the end of the year, uh, the third quarter in particular is gonna be really strong great for work, great for money, great for school, whatever it is you're trying to work towards, I feel like that goal starts to come into fruition in the latter part of the year. It's looking like September's a great month. It's also looking like many of you are focusing on uh, independence and financial stability and growth and long-term sustainability. All of these things are good. The reversal of this is saying don't be afraid to ask for what you need, whatever you need in your life, whether it's you need to talk to your boss about a um, getting more money or what your path to uh, the next step in your, your sort of career growth ladder is, or if there's something else that you want to talk to your loved one about, again, planning for the future. It all looks pretty good this month. And again, these two cards together, even though they're reversed, are very positive. This shows a step up opportunity, uh, and this shows the reward that you can get by uh, really doing well on that. As we look at the outcome card, we have a great card when it comes to anything that you have to do with written communication, litigation, contracts, and also just speaking your mind. I feel like you're going to exit February in a much stronger state than you are uh, as you enter it. And you're gonna be moving from a very practical state to one, and one where you're sort of focusing on all the things in front of you to one where you can actually take action. This is one of the best cards for forward momentum. And if we're coming from death in the center over the Ten of Swords to the King of Swords, that tells me you've conquered your fears, which is a great way to kind of wrap up the month there. So overall, I'm excited. The beginning is going to be the most challenging for many of you. And this Catalyst card really is speaking to the fact that you don't want to think yourself into, um, into a, a corner or into a prison. Allow yourself to take action. Don't delay. Let's go ahead now and expand the forecast. We'll take a look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, beginning with health. The health card for me is always one that's holistic. It's going to include your mind, your body, and your spirit. So let's go ahead and shuffle the cards and see what specific messages are coming through for health.
Okay, so we have balance and the card is reversed. And so you definitely want to work on finding balance between work and home or school and home. Uh, and also your social life. Bring all these things into as much of an equilibrium as you can. This card is really focused on heart colors as well. So I want to make sure that you're feeling good about your life, about your health, about what you're doing. You want to spend some time for self-care this month especially. Uh, so once you've balanced things out, you're going to have enough energy to go around for everything. But as we talked about at the beginning, there could be something that's flaring up, whether it's just a feeling of aches and pains, so you might need a massage, could be something more chronic or more serious, in which case you'll get the help that you need. Whatever it is, I do feel like you can achieve that balance or more of a balance by the end of the month. Let's go ahead now and look at your wealth card. And this wealth card is about how you can most successfully navigate work, school, money, and the relationship between you and money or a career for that matter. So I'm, I'm using the uh, Lord Ganesha deck this month because I love the positive energy that it, it has. And this card is all about feeling that you are attached to the outcome. It was reversed as are many of these and I think that's okay. We're going through a really big shift for you this month so the energy is sort of fluctuating. But I'm gonna read this upright so you can see it. So this belonging card is feeling that if you're at work and you're sort of on a big project and you don't feel like you're part of the team, this is saying you need to try to either connect to the project, connect to the outcome or connect to those around you. Um, with your sort of general self-worth because for me the money card or the career card or the wealth card always has to do with how you feel about yourself you need to feel that you deserve whatever it is that you're you're calling in and also whatever you have already achieved sometimes we doubt that which we've already manifested and this card is saying no you worked for that that's part of what you uh, have brought into existence it belongs to you you belong to it so i want you to feel that you have a stake, you have a part, you have a, a, a place at the table at your destiny. So whatever it is you're trying to work on, feel attached to it. And also focus on the people around you so that they understand that you indeed care about them. And so it's really a card of reciprocity as well. All right, let's take a look now at your love card. Love includes all relationships in your life. Let's just see what the message is as we take a look at the card here. All right, so we have choose love. And this is a card of really taking the highest possible path even when things are difficult. And if we look at the subtext on this or the, the writing beneath it, it says you always have a choice as to what you should do or I would say what you want to do here. And so this is about not only um, choosing a path that is one that isn't uh, vendetta, getting even, holding on to a grudge. It's interesting that we say hold a grudge, right? Because it really is holding the energy. This card is about loving yourself enough to let go of people and situations that might be toxic or challenging in your life. There's a great example of this right now in pop music, uh, and it's someone who hasn't maybe find, found their way there completely, but they're trying to find it through the song, which I appreciate. Uh, it's Kesha's Praying, which we just saw on the Grammys the other night. And, uh, and, and what's great about that is you can still see she's working through anger, but she does try to empathize with people in her life or a person in her life, ostensibly, um, who has done her wrong. And she's trying to, f to basically say, I hope you're evolving because I'm, I'm trying to evolve. And so that's what this, this card is saying is choose a path of love, choose words of love and actions of love, even, or I would say, especially when, others around you don't have it within their capacity to do the same. When you think of great leaders in the past, whether they're, um, you know, if you look at like Gandhi or um, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a lot of what they did was nonviolence, words of peace, and words of inspiration. And so choosing this uh, path of love, especially when people around you don't know how to show it, that's what you need to do this month. So we have that Ten of Swords and the Death card at the center. So there could be someone that knows how to push your buttons. This card says, don't let them push your buttons or walk away or find the strength within and say, you know, I don't understand where this is coming from. I only exist in a place of love and you're, you're coming from a place where there's a lot of other things you're bringing forward. So anyway, find it within yourself either to forgive, to, to move forward 
or to at least model the behavior that you hope others will eventually adopt themselves. All right, finally, let's take a look at your destiny card. Destiny is sort of a GPS. If you like where you're headed, perfect, stick with that path. If you don't, this card gives you a chance to move forward and to try something different. All right, so we're gonna go with this card, which says um, you're actually on a very good path should you decide to choose it uh, and stick with it, I should say. We have this, um, I'm looking really at the, uh, the, the caption beneath it, which says fortuitous. Uh, so with everything, there's risk or there's uncertainty. That's why we have the fortune cookies here. Um, and so sometimes you don't know exactly what the outcome will be. Uh, and remember what we said earlier, why don't you write your own fortune by thinking, I can do this, I will do this. I actually think that's the powerful message when we look at these two put together, which is let your own thoughts, let your own beliefs, let your own love and positivity write your future. The, you know, we come into this planet and we, we sort of set up certain activities or certain um, situations that are gonna challenge us that we can grow from. What we do with them is completely up to us and how much we can learn from them, that's completely up to us. This destiny card is telling you you're much more in control of your destiny than you believe, something that I say every month. This card is malleable, so change your destiny if you don't like it and uh, do that by basically kind of doing everything we talked about this month. It was very much an instructional month, not just for February, but for 2018. So let's go ahead and uh, review everything so that you can get all of those pieces of information. Your catalyst, this card, reversed, was saying, do not delay, act now. And it also is attached to the end of the year, the third or fourth quarter of the year. And as we're looking here at the nine of pentacles, looking more at like September. And then, the channeled information was what I just mentioned, to let your own thoughts be positive and let those thoughts be fuel for uh, your own momentum, your own trajectory. There's something at the month, at the beginning of the month that you have to let go of or that you're going to be faced with the chance to release because we have the Ten of Swords, a powerful card in and of itself, crossed by the Death card, which is equally as powerful. These are both transformative cards. This is usually a marked end to a situation, and this is a beginning and a moving through. It's like a portal. So you have a chance to let go, move through something. For some of you, you might need to check in with um, a physician or a healthcare provider if there's any sort of chronic pains. It's also just a general note to make sure that you're active enough, again, by sitting, by uh, not moving enough that you could be creating some of the pain as well. And we have the ability for new relationships here. We have both the King and the Knight of Pentacles, and it's also supported by the uh, Six of Chalices or the Six of Cups. All of these are really speaking to the ability to create something new. But what we're seeing with these three cards here is that they're right by this massive change event. So there's something in your life that you have to work through. This relationship could challenge or bring it up, or it could also be something that has to wait until it's resolved. Three of Pentacles, a step up opportunity happening, it's reversed, you're going to be challenged, but I see a big growth opportunity, the Nine of Pentacles here in the desired action or the opportunity area. Try not to get too stuck in your thoughts, your ways, or your patterns. Move through them, uh, act upon your hopes, your dreams, your decisions, and know that you're going to exit the month in a position of much more power and a feeling of stability than you entered the month with. As we look at your expanded forecast, really bringing balance uh, into your health, into your, I would say, the balance between work and home or school and home, et cetera. You really wanna make sure that you're getting that sort of balance in check and also just making sure that you're eating well, that you're sleeping enough, et cetera. All of these things are important this month. As we look at your wealth card, making sure that you feel attached to what you're working on. If you're not, that's part of the challenge with your success, with why you're feeling perhaps ready to move on. So if you don't feel it, find a way that you can work towards a path that does offer more, uh, more of a sense of accomplishment. And as we look at overall relationships, it's about choosing to be positive, choosing to model the behavior that you're looking for uh, in others, even if they can't do it themselves. The final card is reminding you that you are always in control. You always are in control. And I want you through your own thoughts actions and words to create a destiny that uh, really makes your heart sing, okay? I hope that this was helpful, and if you'd ever like more of a one-on-one -on -one forecast, I absolutely do have those appointments on my website, so feel free to take a look in the description area below. Um, also, at the end of the video, I put some links, but you can, uh, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me there. If you'd like to stay in touch, the best way to do so, of course, is subscribe to this channel um, so you can like and subscribe the video. 
but you can also join my newsletter or follow me on social networks. And I'll have links below to all of those, but I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, it's a great way to know when I release new videos, meditations, or if there's any news that's coming out. And finally, I like to end everything with a, a bit of gratitude. I, I'm so inspired by all the comments and emails that I received by you guys. So I want to say first and foremost, thank you. And I want you to continue working on yourself. And one message that I'm trying to bring across this month is that one voice, one person, uh, can make a big difference in the world. We don't see it initially, but it's kind of like those flickering candles that I have in the background. If you put a thousand of those together, it's so much brighter than one light, but, but it has to start with one. So I'm hoping that these videos are a way for each of us to find that light within and that collectively we're going to shine much, much brighter. So let the person, let, the, let that agent of change be you this month and every month, every day really of this year. Wishing you much love and light. Thank you so much for taking time for yourself. From my heart to yours, much thanks, much gratitude. Keep shining.